Okay, then um, let me start uh, uh, this, this, uh, the content of the webinar by uh, talking about the, the long distance transport um, of green hydrogen. Um, this is quite significant, uh, as uh, um, especially in, uh, in Germany, but also in the European Union. Um, there is definitely a need going forward to also import uh, hydrogen from also outside of Europe. Um, so what are the, the transport options for importing green hydrogen? Um, so first and foremost, um, pipelines uh, are a um, yeah, very prominent uh, example of a transport option. You could either repurpose existing natural gas pipelines or you could construct new dedicated hydrogen pipelines. A second option would be the shipping of hydrogen and its derivatives. So when I'm talking about derivatives, I'm mostly referring to ammonia, methanol or e-fuels. So you could ship hydrogen in its liquid form. You could also use liquid organic hydrogen carriers or use um, um, ammonia as a derivative um, for shipping. Other options would include um, e-fuels, um, but there you can just use the, the existing ships to transport e-fuels. Um, then you could, instead of transporting the green hydrogen, you could also transport electricity over long distances via transmission lines. And as the last option, and I won't go into detail, would be um, um, trucks or trains, um, but this is more relevant for uh, the last mile, so for short, uh, short distance transport of hydrogen. But today we want to focus mostly on the long distance transport options. Um, so now I'm um, going into the economics of uh, hydrogen pipelines specifically. Here on the left hand side, um, you see how much uh, hydrogen pipelines would cost. Um, it really depends for new pipelines on the diameter. Um, so smaller pipelines are significantly more expensive than um, larger pipelines. So for smaller pipelines, we're talking about uh, roughly uh, um, 80 euro cents uh, per kilogram of hydrogen per um, 1000 kilometer. Whereas for um, smaller, for larger pipelines, so 48 inch diameter, it would be um, 20 euro cents, so a lot cheaper. And here the largest cost share would be CAPEX. Um, regarding the, the repurposed pipelines that you see here on the right, um, they're a lot cheaper. Um, so you can see that um, they would be around uh, 10 to well, 15 euro cents. And here the largest cost component uh, would be um, compression. So what are the key messages? Um, so if you want to build new hydrogen pipelines, they should be built um, using a, a large diameter in order to also anticipate increasing amounts of, of hydrogen transport in the future. If you build them too small, then you might uh, end up with, with high costs and uh, need to rebuild or expand existing pipelines or build a second one. Um, what is also important when talking about pipelines is storage, and I will get into the topic later on, because um, you need the storage to have a um, storage, especially on the supply side, to have a consistent utilization of the pipeline. This is particularly relevant because uh, uh, hydrogen has a similar um, production profile um, to solar and wind because it comes from renewable sources, so you need storage on the supply side. Um, compression as a cost driver, um, initially that would be low because you have low utilization, but then if the hydrogen supply increases, um, utilization of course of the pipeline goes up uh, and then 75% 75 utilization of the, um, of the pipeline represents kind of a cost optimum. Uh, when talking about uh, long distance pipelines, uh, geopolitical feasibility is of course also an issue that needs to be considered. Um, next up would be the, topping, the topic of uh, shipping. Um, so shipping, as you can see here, um, is uh, a more expensive op option compared to, to pipelines but shipping would be available already in, in the short term, especially ammonia shipping. 
you can see that uh, liquid hydrogen um, shipping would be the most expensive one. Um, liquid hydrogen um, would, well, to liquefy hydrogen, you would need to cool it to uh, below minus 250 degrees um, and compress, compress it. Um, so you would already have quite significant conversion losses, as you can see here. So the majority of the costs um, come down to, to conversion. Um, and then you need to build these ships because they don't exist yet. Uh, in terms of liquid organic hydrogen carriers, those are basically uh, materials um, where you attach hydrogen molecules to, um, and then um, they are much more compressed um, compared to um, pure hydrogen. However, here um, the reconversion, so um, removing hydrogen from those uh, hydrogen carriers is quite expensive and is a cost driver. Additionally, you would have to ship the, the hydrogen carriers back to where the supply came from. So there would be uh, an empty way for the ship to go. Um, last but not least uh, is uh, the ammonia shipping. Ammonia shipping is already established today um, and it would be a, a feasible way to transport it. Um, and if you want to use hydrogen, um, ammonia also as a final energy source, as a final feedstock, um, it is economically uh, quite uh, quite interesting at uh, roughly 60 euro cents. However, if you need to reconvert it back uh, into hydrogen, then um, prices increase and it becomes uh, more or less inefficient. And also the, the reconversion, so the cracking of ammonia back to hydrogen um, has not been explored on a um, industrial scale. Um, now comparing uh, hydrogen pipelines versus shipping. Uh, here you can see that uh, especially for distances over up to basically 6,000 kilometers, uh, repurposed pipelines are cheaper, are a cheaper option compared to shipping. Um, if you look at the repurposed pipelines, if you look at new pipelines, then shipping becomes a viable option at around three and a half thousand kilometers in distance. Now looking at uh, the cost comparison power lines versus pipeline, um, as you can see here, the, um, the gray lines and the dotted lines that represent pipelines, um, there are almost always, um, yeah, more affordable um, and than power lines. So um, if you want to transport hydrogen over a longer distances, uh, they would be um, from a cost perspective, uh, the, the preferred option. Next up, I want to talk about um, storage options for hydrogen. Um, so you can basically differentiate two types of storage. Uh, one would be the overground storage, either compressed, liquefied, solid, or as derivatives. However, overground storage is, is not ideal for mass storage due to inefficiencies. You would require um, large spaces and the boil off. And typically costs exceed uh, one euro per kilogram of, of stored hydrogen or 30 euros uh, per megawatt. Um, so the preferred option for uh, large, um, yeah, large storage of, of hydrogen would be underground storage. Uh, and here, salt caverns, aquifers, or depleted gas fields uh, could be a, a good option. Next up, I want to look at uh, the cost um, of uh, different types of, of hydrogen storage. And here you can see on the left-hand side, so we've looked at uh, different studies, how they uh, would um, yeah, foresee the, the cost of hydrogen storage in salt caverns. And yeah, you can see that it's mostly between, between 5 uh, to 20 euros per megawatt of, of stored hydrogen. Whereas um, if you use uh, the levelized cost of electricity storage uh, using various technologies, so for example, batteries, you would end up with uh, significantly higher costs ranging from um, 66 euros uh, per megawatt of stored electricity um, of yeah, even increasing to over 200 uh, euros uh, per megawatt of stored electricity. 
Um, so that gets me uh, to the conclusion that uh, um, to avoid conversion losses, um, energy, including hydrogen or electricity, should always be transported in the form in which it is required on the demand side. So if you do need electricity as a final energy um, product, uh, then you should transport electricity. If it's hydrogen that you need, then hydrogen should be transported. And if it's ammonia, um, then of course it should be ammonia that's being transported. Uh, regarding pipelines uh, or long distance transport in general, repurposed pi pipelines are the most cost efficient way um, of transporting um, hydrogen and there um, you should opt for um, the larger diameters, so 48 inches. Um, um, ships are particularly suitable for the transport of derivatives, so ammonia and, and e-fuels, um, but less so for pure hydrogen due to the conversion losses, which quite impact the economic efficiency. Um, what is also important to note that um, while um, yeah, pipelines do get more expensive with distance, um, ships uh, do not. So the, the main cost block is really the, the conversion and, and reconversion. Um, well, it doesn't really make a big difference whether you transport it over 2,000 or 10,000 kilometers. Um, regarding um, power lines, um, existing power lines can be used for local generation. Um, however, the, the construction of new long distance power lines to then um, produce hydrogen somewhere far away is at a cost disadvantage compared to um, constructing uh, new pipelines. And then the last point on the underground storage. Um, underground storage is, is the most cost efficient way uh, to, to store large volumes of, of energy and hydrogen for timescales um, as short as an hour or also as, as long as a as month. Um, so yeah, that would be my presentation on, um, yeah, on long distance transport of hydrogen and they are happy to answer any, any questions. And now 